Hello everybody, I am Zach Peterson and you have probably seen me elsewhere on YouTube, but today I'm very happy to show you some of the new and very cool industrial systems applications from Renesis that you can build in Sealess. Now, if you're an electronics engineer and you haven't heard of Sealess, then you've been missing out. Sealess is an AI-driven circuit design platform that generates schematics for your PCB design projects. Users can now access many Renesis parts in Sealess today for free. If you want to follow along, head on over to Sealess.io and sign up, and let's get started. access all of this cool stuff inside of the Sealess platform, you first have to go in and create a project. I'm going to go to one of the projects I've created and very quickly I'll show you how to set this up so you can access some of those solutions from Renesis. So here inside of the project settings, you can create a description for your project, you can create some project information here, and you can select a target output tool to build your PCB. And here in the project specification area, you can then select some preferred manufacturers. Here I've selected both of the Renesis options that are in the database. Obviously, as you scroll through this list, you can see that this is a pretty extensive list of manufacturers that you can use to build your project. Now, here you can, of course, exclude some manufacturers. You can exclude specific parts. And as we scroll down here, we can apply some additional settings such as power and one that is very important for industrial systems, of course, is operating temperatures. So let's go ahead and go back over to the canvas. Now, you can build these uh, block diagrams from a template, or you can start with a totally blank canvas and just drag some of these items over here from this design library into the canvas and start building a block diagram for your system. So Sealess relies entirely on setting up this block diagram and what it's gonna do is take all of your project description and specifications as well as this block diagram. You click the resolve button up here in the upper left corner and that is going to then pick out different parts that link together to form your schematics. Pretty simple idea. So let's suppose I wanna add ethernet to my design. I can just drag in, for example, this ethernet transceiver block. I just click this plus sign over here telling the system I wanna add in a connection so that I can connect this to <clears throat> my wireless communication block. And you can see here, they're now all connected. Next, when I click the resolve button, the AI system is going to then figure out which parts to group together into this system. And then I'll be able to go through and select from some different options. And at the end of it, I will be able to get a set of schematics and a BOM for this design. So let's go ahead and click resolve and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back and we have now a system that has resolved and now we can see what Renesis solutions are available for this system here. So here in this system, I have my wireless communication block here. This is basically going to be a wireless enabled microcontroller. Here I have my ethernet transceiver. Here we've got a DC-DC converter that's gonna supply power to all this stuff. And here we have some temperature and humidity sensor options. Now when I right click and hit the select Kubo menu, you'll see this list of options comes up and we can already see a bunch of temperature and humidity sensors that are available from our preferred manufacturer, Renesis. Here you can see that we have the HS3000 series as well as some HS4000 series options. Everything from this list right here is all available from Renesis. Here there's an info button. If I click this, it's gonna open up some specifications. You're gonna be able to see the circuitry that goes into this sensor. Here there's a little preview you can open. You can see here, this is a pretty straightforward sensor. It's just a couple of capacitors here for power. We got one additional capacitor here on this pin, and then we have an I2C or I squared C interface for collecting the data. Now briefly, let's just take a look at some of the specs. You can see this has pretty good resolution. You can see here the measurement range, zero to 100 for uh, relative humidity. Um, here for the temperature accuracy, we've got some pretty good temperature accuracy down to a fraction of a degree. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this humidity and temperature sensor, and I can just lock this in. Now, if I go back to this project, because of course I locked in a combo humidity and temperature sensor right here in this block, I actually don't even need to include the humidity block and I can just delete this. Now, what about our microcontroller? Do we have a Renesis solution for this? 
Well, if I right click here, select Kubo, you can see here that we actually do have an option from Renesis available. This is the R5F5 series microcontroller with integrated Bluetooth. But again, just click on the info button. You can see here that this microcontroller has a pretty high IO count. We'll be able to connect uh, not only the stuff that we see here in our project, but we can also connect that ethernet transceiver as well as some additional sensors that might be needed in an industrial monitoring system. One of the cool things about these circuit blocks, which in the SELA system are called Kubos, is that you don't need to manually add all of these additional components. This, this Kubo already contains all of the components that you need for this microcontroller to work as soon as you put it onto your PCB. Now, of course, you have to lay out the PCB correctly, but you can see here all of these additional required components are already selected. And if we go back here and we take a look at the bomb for this Kubo, we even have a list of part numbers here and we have some life cycle data as well. So what else can we add in here? Well, let's suppose that we want to expand our sensor capabilities. We're going to add in, for example, air quality and let's have some fun and go with wind speed measurement. Now, I'm not going to go with combined wind speed and direction. I didn't want to add an anemometer. I'm just going to add in wind speed measurement for now. Now, again, in order to connect these, we just add some ports here. I add a couple of ports here, and I'm just going to draw these ports over and connect them up. We'll clean this up just a little bit. And there we go. We're connecting everything to our microcontroller now. Once these new circuit blocks are added in and I've cleaned up everything, I can just click the resolve button again. The AI will go through and look for parts that are compatible with those new circuit blocks with my chosen microcontroller. And I can then go through and select the Kubos for those new circuit blocks. Let's go ahead and resolve this and we'll be right back. Now that this is finished resolving, let's take a look at these air quality and wind speed sensor options. So here under air quality, if I go to select Kubo, you can see we already have some options here from Renesis. These are refrigeration air quality sensors. And I didn't know that there were integrated circuit air quality sensors specifically for refrigeration, but hey, you learn something new every day, right? If we just go over here and look at the uh, information for this Kubo, you can see here, again, pretty simple setup for this circuit. We have an I2C interface or I2C interface. We have an interrupt and a reset and then just some resistors and capacitors. Um, here under the description, you'll be able to see that this is intended for a low voltage, low power battery type of application. Makes sense. This is probably something that they would put in a refrigeration truck or another refrigeration unit. And this is for food monitoring. Next, let's go back and take a look at our available wind speed sensor. Now here we have an air velocity sensor. Once again, I squared C interface here, just some simple capacitor connections to complete this circuit. Here you can see that this is a pretty good wind speed measurement sensor. Um, you can see here 0.75 meters per second accuracy out of a zero to 15 meter per second range. And we actually have pretty good resolution. So this would be a good sensor for an airflow application in an industrial setting. Now, the one thing that we haven't talked about in this design yet is of course power. You need to power all of this stuff. And so you're gonna need power conversion and power regulation to do that. You can see here, I have a switching DC-DC conversion block. And since this is already a resolved design, I can right click here and I can hit select Kubo. And as I scroll through this list, there are already many options from Renesis that I can select from. Once you've selected everything in all of these different circuit blocks, you can go here to the lower left area and you can preview your bill of materials. All of that information on your components is gonna be compiled here. You can also get your output files. This is going to give you your schematic files that you can then import into your PCB design tools. You can also download a bill of materials and you can download a PDF that contains all of the specifications for your project. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you like what you see in Sealess, head over to sealess.io and sign up for free today. If there's something specific you would like to see us build in Sealess, find me on LinkedIn and let me know, or you can leave a comment on the video. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.